What's going on? It's your man, Corey, and welcome to episode three of, um, I still haven't figured a name out for this. This is the episode where we're going to figure out what we're going to call this show. If you stick around to the end, I'm going to put some names out there that I've seen some of you drop in the comment section. Y'all have actually been coming up with some really cool names, better than what I could have came up with. Um, so I'm going to just drop a few that I've seen that I kind of like. We're going to vote on it. I'm going to look through the comments and whatever gets the most votes, whatever it feels like we rocking with, that's what I'm going to move towards and that's what we sticking with forever because I just need something to build around. But if you're new to this, if this is your first time tuning in, this is pretty much a new show that I'm doing where I want to talk about some of the things that have been happening in music throughout the week. Just get your opinions on things, give you something to talk about, to discuss, something to debate about in the comment section and just, you know... Give you a chance to get my opinion on some of these things that's going around. Because some of y'all hit me and ask. So I figured, you know, why not share with everybody? So what I want to jump into first is this Ari Lennox and Lizzo situation. Now, if you're unfamiliar, this past week, BET held its Soul Train Awards. And if you're unfamiliar with that, the Soul Train Awards is pretty much like the last award show that's purely about honoring r&b music is meant to honor r&b singers soul singers and people who fit within that category new old in between all that good stuff so the most recent one happened this past week and we saw people like lizzo beyonce her cardi b beyonce summer walker chris brown all of these r&b heavyweights get nominated for these different awards that they were presenting now Ari Lennox specifically. Ari Lennox is a singer that is assigned to Dreamville. Dreamville is J. Cole's label, right? She's based out of D.C. Really, really talented artist who put out her album Shea Butter Baby earlier this year through Dreamville through the whole nines. It was pretty much her debut album and what many people consider to be like one of the best R&B albums of not just this year, but in a minute. And I listened to it. It is a really good album. She feels slighted because she lost album of the year to Lizzo. Now, she didn't specifically call out Lizzo. Um, you can't find any audio of any video of her saying, you know, forget you, Lizzo. I should have won it. But she went on a long rant on Twitter basically talking about how she's done with the industry. She's done playing the politics of the games of the industry and how she's not necessarily mad at the artists who won because you can't be mad at those artists, right? She's more so mad at the Soul Trains Awards because she thought that they were supposed to honor and represent what soul music sounds like, and she feels like she put out one of the most pure soul representative albums of this year. And if you're looking at it that way, you could you could you could see her point. I I, I do agree with that. It is out of all the R and B albums that have come out this year through her, through Summer Walker, through Snow Allegra, um, through Ella May, Shea Butter Baby by Ari Lennox has been one of the more traditional sounding sounding soul albums. So even just me thinking, and this is me without listening to Lizzo too hard, I, I won't lie to you, I haven't listened to a lot of Lizzo music, I've heard maybe three or four songs, but the songs I've heard from her, or the songs I've heard from her have all been mostly pop songs, like they sound more so like pop infused rap, R&B style songs, as opposed to what we traditionally think of when we think of the Soul Train Awards is, you know, that old school or just even modern twist on old school soul singing sound. So that is what she's going off of. That's the point that we're looking at from her. I completely feel her. I completely understand. I would have thought that out of that category, it would have been, went between like her, like actual her, not <laughs> Ari Lennox her, but the singer her and Ari Lennox or maybe even some Walker would have came into the category. I understand the Soul Train Awards giving it to Lizzo, right? It's a power play. Lizzo is, out of that entire list, the hottest artist. Just of this past year, she's had some of the biggest smash out hits. Maybe, maybe close second with Summer Walker, but I would argue she's probably been bigger than Summer Walker this past year, right? So it's a power move for the Soul Train Awards. Let's give the award to Lizzo so that, you know, we get all this attention from it. Not to take that away from Lizzo, because Lizzo is dope. But if we're going off of what we traditionally think of when we think of the Soul Train Awards, or what the sound of what we thought or think that the Soul Train Awards is meant to embody and to kind of preserve and respect, I wouldn't give that to Lizzo. You know what I'm saying? Her music is dope, but it sounds more pop focused than Ari Lennox, Summer Walker, her, and that whole nine yards. So just some of the tweets that Ari Lennox was putting out there. Uh, she was talking about it's not just the awards. Uh, Shea Butter Baby was slept on in so many ways. I'm too emotional to pretend like I can play this game. It's clear I'm not cool enough, not trendy enough, and I don't care to be. I don't strive for that. I'm not going to, and I think she said something like conform to what's going on. 
uh, letter she wrote, I made a soul from album. I never ran from who I am. I just expected that, that one platform to understand that. So she's going back to the point of she thought that a platform based around soul music would pick what she felt like to be the most soulful album of the year. Um, I see that point, but at the end of the day, I feel like, what's the point of complaining about it? Ireland, you make dope music. You'll be here for a minute. You'll get another chance. I get the, the sting of having your first album lose. It's your first, you know... It's your first hit at the bat. I get that. But you'll be okay, man. Your fans still love your music. People are still defending her on Twitter. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Do you feel like she's complaining or do you feel like she has a good point? Just let me know. Now, let's use that to segue into another award show that is on the horizon, right? The Grammys have released their nominations for the 2020 uh, Grammys. It's going to previewing on January, sometime in January. And I got to say, man, this might be the first Grammy list that I've looked at in a minute where I'm like, man, they kind of got this right. Like, I don't have any any hard complaints on any of the, at least not the rap categories and the R&B categories. I have a little bit of complaints on, like, the world music categories and Afrobeats not getting its own category. But that's a, that's a whole other story for another day. If we're talking about specifically urban music, R&B, rap. They seem to have gotten right this year. I'm going to read off some of these nominations that they have on here. So, for look, best rap performance. We got Middle uh, Middle Child J. Cole, The Baby Shook, Down Bad Dreamville, Racks in the Middle, Nipsey Hustle, Offset, Cardi B, Clout uh, for best albums. Who we got for best albums? For best rap album, we got Revenge of the Dreamers 3, Championships, Meek Mill, I Am, I Was, 21 Savage, Igor Tyler, The Creator, and The Lost Boy, YBN Corday. That that in my opinion is a well-rounded list. We got the new high act or a new high act that actually put out a good project, YBN Corday, right? Someone that has just really uh, burst onto the scene really this year and really started to make a name for himself outside the YBN crew and just put himself on that bigger platform this year. So it's cool for them to honor someone who is so young into the game, right? Because we don't see it a lot, especially not in rap. It doesn't ever really seem like the Grammy... Uh, the Grammy committee is paying attention to the acts that are just starting to come up. It always feels like they're paying attention to the superstar acts, which looking at the rest of this list, that's exactly what it is, right? We got Dreamville in there, Meek Mill, 21 Savage, and Tyler the Creator, man. That's a really well-rounded list. And another thing I think is really cool about this, just personally, is this man J. Cole about to get everybody a Grammy. I was just debating with one of my friends about if Dreamville's album actually has a chance of winning rap album. I feel like it does. I don't think they'll give it to YBN Corday. I don't think they'll give it to Tyler the Creator um, because I think that when it kind of comes to, if they're voting pure rap, I don't think they'll give it to Tyler. If they're voting based off of even mainstream appeal, I still don't think they would give it to Tyler. But they could go in that direction just because it's something different from what's on the rest of the list. I don't see Meek Mill winning it. Um, I, I don't. I feel like even though Championships was a really good album, I don't think they'll give it to him just because outside of that, he was pretty quiet this year. You know, the Grammys is all about like who are, who is the committee familiar with, who are who do they know about, who are they paying attention to. Um, so I feel like Revenge of the Dreamers, this Dreamville compilation, has probably the best chance of winning. And if it does win, that's just that's what like forty something different acts, producers songwriters that j cole has just thrown like this major look to like there are acts who are just starting to bubble out of atlanta that were on there like baby rose young baby tate um i can't think of his name right now um oh, that's a rapper i can't i can't think of his name but a lot of acts burgeoning from out of here to even up and coming acts like buddy and um and guap dad 4000 and just these different burgeoning acts who this was already just such a great look for from j cole now he's giving them all the opportunity to walk around for the rest of their career and go i'm a grammy nominated artist if they win they're able to go for the rest of their careers i'm a grammy winning artist and i think that's cool man that's dope so and then in the, in the r&b section i don't feel like they dropped the ball too much there uh there are a couple acts that i wish i got nominated let me go to it real quick and look so like for the they got daniel caesar love again her could have been Lizzo, Gucci Mane, exactly how I feel. Lucky Day, Rose Samo, Anderson Pack, Under 3000, Come Home. And this is for the best R&B performance. And then as far as the albums, they got Steve Lacey in here. They got Now. Uh, they got Jesse Reyes, BJ the Chicago Kid, Lucky Day, Ella May, Anderson Pack, PJ Morton, man. They, they got it right this year. The only person that's missing from the R&B list, in my opinion, is Snow Allegra and Solange. Wait, no. Solange's album didn't come out this year, right? Did Solange's album come out this year? No, I don't think so. So Snow Allegra, they're missing Snow Allegra in my opinion. But 
Bro, kudos to the Grammys, man. Kudos to whoever made the change on the back end on the committee to get some people in there who are actually paying attention to what's going on in rap music and R&B music this year. Um, hopefully, it's coming from a good place. You know, Hopefully, we continue to see more of this. Because like I said, this is the first time in a minute that I've seen a list. And I was like, okay, I don't have any complaints. I, I can work with that. I can run with that. And in other news, last week, we talked about Kodak Black and how he had been sentenced to 46 months, uh, 40 months on those gun charges. Now, it got re uh, reported shortly after me dropping that video that Kodak Black is seeking to have some of his time served in rehab and rehabilitation. And the reason he's seeking rehab is that, um, like I said, literally probably a couple hours after I dropped that last video, it was reported that he was trying or they were trying to get him a more time because he had assaulted an officer. Kodak and his legal team were um, are pretty much insisting that Kodak was drugged by someone in the cell. So they're putting the story out that he was drugged by a rival gang member because of that drug and because of how he was drugged. It caused him to react the way that he reacted to the prison guard, um, causing him to attack it. And they're pretty much trying to seek having Kodak put into rehab based off of those claims and just some other things. Now, in this sentence... Going to rehab is more favorable to him. Why, you may ask, is because, like I said, it knocks off prison time. I'm reading here. If he were to get it, he would have the option of having up to a year knocked off his prison sentence. So 12 months knocked off of a 40-month sentence is, what, 28 months? So that knocks it down to two years and some change, uh, like two years and a quarter or something like that. So obviously, if you're someone in Kodak's situation, you're looking to try to get the least amount of time that you can possibly do some things to knock this stuff down. Now, outside of that... I'm looking at it like if Kodak takes rehab seriously, which there have been reports that he's been saying things like he's going to get a college degree and focus on like a business major and all this stuff. If he takes this seriously, um, even though it will be a long time before he gets out, like I was saying last episode, I am just the type of person where I feel like if you are an artist and you're in something actively trying to change for the better, you're trying to come out of a situation that better person. I can't knock you for it, man. Like you're, you, you, you're, you're paying the time for the crime you did. You're not running from it. You're not trying to complain about it at this point. You're just like, I'm going to actually better myself, which I'm hoping that when we see Kodak get released from these programs, when he gets released in however many years times he ends up having to serve, that he comes out a better person because he's young, man. Like he makes pretty good music. He's young enough that if he were to get out in three years, he could come, he could hop back on the scene, start putting music out, and start you know pretty much working himself back to where he was. Assuming he doesn't get convicted of some of those charges that are, are a little bit more serious and image deterring than a gun charge, right? And I'm talking about like some of those sexual assault cases. Assuming that he's found innocent in some of those cases and it's, it's proven that he didn't do those things, he could still come out of this situation in a good enough spot to rebuild his career and rebuild his name back out there. He's like 21, 22, like you know. He has at least another six to seven to eight years out here, um, especially as a niche, really popular niche artist, um, because he does make good music. So hopefully he comes out of this better person overall. Um, take rehab seriously, bro. You know what I'm saying? You have fans out here that want to see you do right and, and, and do right by everything that you have coming out, man. Like So that's all I got for that situation. Other than that, man, it's been a pretty slow week. Uh, as far as new stuff, there's a couple of things that came out that I didn't really feel like deserved enough coverage. But if you're into music, if you are interested in albums that are coming out this week, this is actually a pretty good week for music releases like across the board, rap and R&B. So we got YNW Melly's Melly versus Melvin album. YNW Melly is the artist that, you know, famously was... Uh, well, I don't think he's been convicted yet, but he was sent to jail and they were using his song Murder on My Mind to pretty much paint the picture of him killing his best friend or using it you know, against him as evidence saying that he told the story. That artist has dropped his second album. This is not his debut album, but his new album, Somehow From Prison, bro. Like YNW Melly probably has one of the best behind bar work ethics I've ever seen of any artist. Like he hasn't let his social accounts die. He drops a new song like every other month. And now he has an album and it's actually really being talked about. And I've listened to a little bit of it. It's 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 really good so far. Um but it's something that I'm looking out for. You got Party Next Door and Drake just dropped a song, which is really dope. Party Next Door rarely ever drops music. I think he hasn't dropped a song in like a year, year and a half. And of course he's gonna drop something out with, you know, the OVO big boss dog Drake, which in my mind spells that a party next door album is coming. So that could be cool. Uh Trippy Red dropped All Love Lost. Uh, not All Love Lost. Um A Love Letter to You for 
This is the fourth album in, of course, that compilation. I think this is maybe Trippy Red's like fifth or sixth album over like a th- two or three year time span. Um, I haven't listened to it yet. I'm looking forward to it as a Trippy Red fan. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I haven't been like super impressed with some of his last releases. So I'm kind of looking at it from like the standpoint of a fan that's like, hey, man, you know, hopefully this is the one because he's been losing me a little bit. But I've heard some of the singles he put out before. So I'm going to give it a chance. They were pretty dope. I'm thinking that, you know, this is the fourth part in his series that he really cares about, that he's going to put some real effort into and give us some dope music. So I'm going to check that joint out. Um, Lil Durk dropped the song. Action Brunson dropped his Lamb of a Rice album. O3 Greedo and Kenny Beats dropped Netflix and Deal album. Summer Walker and Chris Brown dropped their song. Lots of new music coming out this week. If you feel like I missed anything, drop it in the comment section below. Let me know what's up. I'm trying to check everything out, catch on to everything, and then, you know, I'm trying to be out there with y'all, man. Y'all got to put me on some new music the same way we put y'all on the new people and all that stuff. And lastly, 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 I said in this video, we are finally going to pick a name for this show. It's been a long three episodes, a long couple of days of me stressing my brain out, trying to think of names for stuff. I suck at naming stuff, just letting y'all know. But I did see two really cool comments in the sections. Um, My bad for not putting the names of you guys who said these for me. But if you know who you are, you know you said it. Thank you. We're going to vote on these two. It is down between Counter Corey. Counter Corey, I kind of like that. And Lunch Break. I like Lunch Break as well. I might I might do some name tweaking with it a little bit. You know, maybe throw the Corey in there. But those are the two names I've kind of fallen on that I've seen from you guys that I personally like. All right, Counter Corey and Lunch Break. Counter Corey, Lunch Break. If you like those names, vote in the comment section below. Let me know which one you rocking with, which one you think we should run with. If you think you got a better name, man, you really think you're just that confident in your naming abilities, drop that as well, man. I am taking all bets. If not... I'm leaning towards one of these two unless somebody gives me something better. So drop those in the comment section below or come and find me on Instagram or Twitter at Corey the Savior. Hit me up and let me know what you think on the show as a whole on some of these topics. What do you feel about the Grammys, man? What do you feel about Ari Lennox? And as always, if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe. And as always, man, I'll see y'all next time. Peace.